Welcome back to Coffee and Conversation. And it's Coke, not coffee today. So Audie is not with us. He had a rather rough time of it this morning when he went out. And let me explain what's been going on. As I've told you, the township is widening the road. So they've been working on the road in front of my house. And they took out my entire hedge. That's like 80 feet. 80 feet standing between me and the barbarians on the road. Well, they can't replace it until the spring because they can't get the bushes they need until then. So there's nothing between me and the forces of evil. And the reason I put up the hedge in the first place was because people would just pull in off the street and park in my lawn. I'm just pull up. It's like, oh yeah, this is a lawn. I think we'll park here. Isn't this lovely? The crazy thing is, is I'm on a corner and the other side of the corner is a, not much more than a driveway, really. It's sort of an old alleyway that at one time, back in the 1940s, I guess, had been the main road, but then the road, the main road bypassed it. So it's a dead end street. I am on the corner, so I have access to both sides of the road. My neighbor across the street, also on a corner, access to both. And we have one neighbor uh, who is just to the east of us. That's the only neighbor who, like, really has to use this back road. And beyond that neighbor's house, there's a good 500 feet of overgrown and marginally paved road that you can park on, you could put out a tent on it and raise a family. It's just, it's just there for, for the taking and marginally paved, but paved nonetheless. So nobody has any real need to park on my lawn. Just go one house past me and you'll have all the free parking you want. I don't understand it. I really don't. But that is why I put the hedge up in the first place, to keep people from doing this. And it wasn't just once in a while. It was all the time. And I, the worst instance was when a giant pavement roller, this is a huge metal roller on something that, that looks like farm equipment, I guess. I don't really know. The roller was taller than I was, and that is just the diameter of it. So, huge thing, pulls in, parks there, and I was like, you can't park that in my lawn. And they said, well, we're just having lunch here. We thought we'd pull in because you've got a nice tree and we can eat in the shade. I, what? So, I don't get it. I don't get their fondness for parking in my yard, but I do accept that it is a reality. So I've got to do something to sort of close this off from the barbarians beating down my gates. So yesterday, when the guy who does my yard for me was here, we put up caution tape and we strung it between the, um, the township street signs. So it's fine. There's nice bright yellow caution tape. And the wind came up last night, this morning, just got windy and the caution tape started swaying in the breeze until the winds got really strong. And this is just plastic tape. So it got all stretched out and distorted. And by the time I got out of bed this morning, it was just dragging on the ground. So let me show you a picture of that. So you see what I'm talking about. So, and, and I pointed out the caution tape with arrows so you can see it. Okay. Caution tape dragging on the ground. Well, Audie wanted to go out. And of course, the caution tape was on the ground, which is very exciting for a little cat. So he goes over to check it out. And it wasn't doing anything. But suddenly a gust of wind came up and bopped him in the head with the caution tape. So he scurries back in the house and it's like, that's it. I'm not going out. You need to pick me up and console me because I got hit in the head with caution tape. I was laughing. I mean, he wasn't hurt. His dignity was hurt. But he was not in any way physically injured by being hit in the head with some plastic caution tape. So I then went out, uh, snipped 
the caution tape and then tied it up here. Let me show you. I've got a picture of that too. To take the slack out of it so it would go back up. I'm going to have to do this like again and again. And if this caution tape is going to be out there for four or five months, this will be like a twice a week ritual for, oh, until March or April when they actually put the replacement hedge in. So the upside is Audie no longer thinks it's safe for a cat to be trolling around out there, which is really good because I don't want him to ever get the idea that going near the street is a safe thing to do. But his dignity was wounded, his, his pride was ruffled, so he was I, needy, basically, just pick me up, hold me, console me, the evil caution tape beat me up. So we're going to see how that works out. Eventually, by the end of this four or five months, however long it's going to be before those hedges go in, he will have adjusted himself to the caution tape, even if right now he thinks it's out to get him. He will have worked that out. So that's my Audi news, this very, very long story. Um, and my caution tape and my missing hedge. So yeah, a lot of things are going sort of screwy in my life right now. But fortunately, none of it is really bad. It's just different. So when we come back, I thought we would talk a little bit about what a bad influence celebrities are having on us. So I'll see you in a minute. So celebrities, well, I, I have to be honest with you, I'm not one of those people who envies celebrities, never have. Uh, none of them ever had a life that I wanted, except maybe Jackie Kennedy. I think, I think I would have liked to have had her life. But for the most part, these are not people whose lifestyles have any appeal for me at all. But last week, I watched the documentary about David Beckham, Netflix, it's called Beckham. And this guy is insanely organized. Now, emphasis on insanely. In, in his situation, I think OCD stands for out of control and dangerous. This guy is so organized. And in the documentary, they gave us a little tour of his closet. I'm going to show you some snippets. Now, I have to be very careful about this because YouTube does not like when we take um, little snippets from other programs. Now, I can do this uh, because I am not showing the entire thing. These are a few seconds of something like a six-hour documentary. So, I am legally okay, but YouTube doesn't always see it that way. So we're just going to take a look at a few random snippets of this so you can see what I mean. This guy's socks are color coordinated in the drawer. I cannot begin to tell you how inadequate I felt when I saw this. As you know, I have been reorganizing, starting with my clothes. I've gone through the closet. I've gone through the dresser. Um, 
which is mostly on my bed right now, because after I saw that documentary, I realized I'm doing it all wrong. I do not have my socks color-coded in the drawer. What is wrong with me? Because my own OCD just turned green with envy. It's like, oh, I got to step up my game. This is crazy. I can't be living like this when he is so organized and so coordinated and... Mm. So, I guess walking away from that, which I probably can for a few minutes, not much more, I started to think more globally about it. What happens to us when we see celebrities, whether it's movie stars or just YouTubers that, that we are watching, um, the people that we don't personally know who come into our lives through our social media, through the television, through the movies, whatever. I don't want to be one of those people. That's one of the reasons that for us it's coffee and conversation. We are just chatting. I do not ever want any of you to say, oh, I got to go live her life. Please don't. My life is chaos. You don't want my life. I am bossed around by a cat. Think about that. You know, you really want that? Sure. Come on over. But we see people's lives when we look at the lives of celebrities. And we are seeing, like the iceberg, that tiny 10% that they are allowing us to see. We are never seeing the 90% that is chaos, that is them being bullied by their cat or, you know, spilling coffee on the floor and then standing there. For the, I did that the other day. Stood there for like two minutes thinking, what should I do about this? While I was debating about whether it was quicker to run to the bathroom and grab a towel or run to the kitchen and grab the paper towels. And while I'm playing this out in my head, here is the coffee puddling up on the floor. Whichever decision I made would have been so much better than just standing there trying to sort it out and taking like two, three minutes to come to a decision. By the way, I, I decided on paper towel, just in case you were wondering. And yeah, eventually I did get the coffee up off the floor, but I don't know. It's like I just had this sort of moment of, of confusion. It's like coffee is on my floor. What do I do now? I, that is the kind of question you legitimately expect a five-year-old to ask. A five-year-old might not understand what you do about a coffee spill. It's been a very, very long time since I was five. I certainly know what to do about a coffee spill that just flew out of my head for a while. So those are the things you don't see. You will not see that because why, why would I film that for you? I'd be too embarrassed to film that for you. But that's what I was looking at in terms of where are our standards coming from? What are we holding up as legitimate role models in our lives? Because we all have them to some extent or another. Um, in many ways, uh, my grandmothers were role models to me. And interestingly enough, with my grandmothers, I really did see their spill coffee on the floor moments. But we tend to isolate that over time. We forget the coffee on the floor moment. And just remember, my grandmother raised 15 children and she cooked dinner and she sewed their clothing and she kept the house. And it's like, wh why am I so lost and confused? You know, and, and I'm glamorizing it. I know this. I know that my grandmother's life was not really the way I remember it. I do know that my grandmother lost her temper and she yelled, and I, I remember this. But for some reason, when I think back, when I start looking at my own inadequacies, it's like, why is my house such a mess? My grandmother did better than this, and she was raising 15 kids at the same time. I'm forgetting everything except, you know, that one mental picture of 
my grandmother's house looking clean and tidy. And we do this to ourselves. We end up sort of setting ourselves up with all kinds of standards that we're never going to achieve. And it might be, you know, the tour of Gwyneth Paltrow's home. By the way, I've never seen that. I don't know what it looks like. For all I know, it could look like, you know, somebody's dank basement. I don't know. But I assume that it's lovely and whatever, because she is a wealthy, wealthy woman who has a staff to come in and do it for her. But then we start to feel inadequate when we see something like this. And I'm like I say, I'm feeling very inadequate when I start to look at David Beckham's closet. And my first thing I did was just start dumping out my own stuff, saying, I got to do this all over again. Um, someone, and this is just a slight aside, one of our viewers had made a reference to um, Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. Jane Austen did not write this scene, by the way. This was in the, um, the it was 1995-96 multi-part series. I think the BBC did it. Jennifer Ailey uh, starred in it. So, yeah, a great, by the way. But there was a scene when Mariah Lucas goes in to repack because Lady Catherine de Bourgh has told her she did it all wrong. So she's repacking her trunks. And Lizzie looks at her and says, Mariah, these are your gowns, your trunks. You can pack them any way you please. Lady Catherine will never know. And I, I, I was reminded of that when a viewer wrote it in, in one of the comments. And I thought, you know, is this what's happening? Are we being surrounded by Lady Catherine de Bourgh's? Are we being surrounded by people whose lives are even crazier than ours are? But because we see that little slice, in the case of Lady Catherine, it was the slice that she served up to you. Look how great I am. We see that one little slice. We don't see the rest. So these standards we have are so absurdly unrealistic. No one is living this life. Well, David Beckham is, right? I, I do believe that, that this is really how he lives. Mm. And I, I'm going to have to start putting out my clothes a week ahead of time. Which is, what can I say? I just... I, I will feel like a complete and total failure if I don't. So are we setting ourselves up to fail because we do not have realistic standards? And I think we might be. And by the way, this is not new. This is not new. Keep in mind, in the Middle Ages, the romance tales, and if you've ever read them, some of them are just absurd. You know, heroes doing things that mortal men cannot do. Ladies, uh, the patient Griselda come, comes to mind. Enduring uh, horrific abuse that no woman in her right mind would ever tolerate. They came up with utterly unrealistic standards and threw them out for us, for women. These were not tales that were primarily aimed at men. They were primarily aimed at women. And in fact, the tales were, uh, did have a secondary application with men. And they tended to keep the crazy behavior of men who were raised to be soldiers in line. So, yes, so that, that part of it is very, very complex, and I don't want to leave that off the table. But for the most part, these tales were told by the traveling bards and troubadours to the women who were left behind in the castles, in the taverns, in wherever they went, while the men were off at war. So, yeah, crazy standards. And it's, so it's not a new thing. It's always been out there. Uh, it's not the celebrities of today. Remember, we just spoke about Jane Austen. 
Well, Jane Austen's characters would have been held up as behavioral standards for the young women of the early 19th century, and I say that with caution, because most respectable mothers would have been somewhat chagrined if their daughters behaved like Jane Austen heroines, who were often a little too outspoken for their own good. But that was the model of, of behavior. And in every one of her novels, you can come up with at least one character who embodies the model of feminine graces. That was who you would hold up as your example. And now I'm looking at this saying, rather than evolving past that, in the early 1800s, a young woman would have probably had access to a few dozen novels. That's about it, because book ownership was for the upper classes. The middle classes would get access to books through circulating libraries, but even that, they were not free. There was a cost. You had to subscribe to the library. The books would be purchased, and they would, in effect, belong to all of the members of the library, and it would go to them, it would go to you, it would go to somebody else when you were done with it. That's how it worked. Um, we're not used to that today. But that young woman would have had a few dozen novels that she would have access to. Look what we have. We have thousands, literally thousands, probably tens of thousands of role models out there. And you look at a TikTok video and, you know, these beautiful young women with all these filters making themselves more beautiful, you know, and six inches of pancake makeup making themselves more beautiful and so on. And by the way, there are TikTok videos exposing this. And that's what we're supposed to look like. Okay, well, they don't even look like that. We go over to YouTube and we see things like uh, the home decorating videos or uh, my favorites, which are these fashionistas. And we look at this and say, well, this is what we're supposed to look like. This is what our houses are supposed to look like. Um, if you go over to the child rearing videos, a whole subset, on YouTube. And you say, well, this is what our children are supposed to behave like. Well, even those people do not have children who behave like this. So as a consequence, what we are doing, instead of having evolved past that absurd standard, the patient Griselda, that no one could ever meet, we have even more absurd standards even more craziness out there telling us you are supposed to, you know, keep a tidy house and raise 15 kids like my grandmother, and you had damn well better look like Angelina Jolie while you're doing it. Kind of scary when you think about it. And whether we want to admit it or not, we are all subject to this pressure. I consider myself far luckier than most because, at least in my case, my pressure is coming from a British soccer player, uh, and uh, which is something I can never be. That's, um, I don't even know what the game is all about. I know they kick a round ball into a net, but I'm not sure whose net they kick it into. Nothing. My knowledge of soccer is sort of right up there with my knowledge of fourth century Chinese literature, which is to say, zip. So that's good for me, because no matter how much I may feel emotionally that I must have David Beckham's super organized drawers and closets, oh, and I do at least intellectually, I realize I cannot have David Beckham's life. I cannot become David Beckham. No matter how organized my drawers are, I am never going to be a professional 
soccer player. So that's when we can look at it and separate it. But if our role models, if the people we are attempting to emulate are movie stars, if we are women looking at these women, the line gets muddier. We, we don't have that clear-cut distinction. It's like, if I wear that, that jacket she's wearing, I can be like her. So we go out and we buy a jacket we don't like that doesn't look good on us that we really can't afford. And this is where the real problems with these behaviors are. When we are encouraged to do things, to try to emulate that celebrity, things that are not in our best interests, we do not need whatever Angelina Jolie is wearing. And even if we have it, we're not going to be her. That's, that's not going to happen for us. And like I say, David Beckham is wonderful because he is such a glaring example of what my life can never be. It's not so clear cut if it's Gwyneth Paltrow, if it's Angelina Jolie, if it's a Kardashian. Not so clear cut. The lines are muddier. Now, these celebrities and the companies that they are brand ambassadors for, I, I really hate that term, brand salespeople for, hucksters. We've got a lot of terms for it. And I think brand ambassador cleans it up a little more than it, it really deserves. These people are not brand ambassadors. They are selling us something. Just like the clerk at our local dress shop, just like the guy at the used car lot who has no problem passing that lemon off to you. Remember that. It, this is not, this is not the clean, dainty, sort of transaction that brand ambassador makes it sound like. No, it is just commerce, period. No matter what we buy that they are hawking to us, no matter what, we're not going to become them. But why do we buy it? Because a part of us believes that we will become at least a little like them somewhat. You wear Angelina Jolie's pretty blazer. Well, you and Angelina Jolie have something in common, you know, and maybe next time out, it'll be Brad Pitt. Oh, yes, I know. There, there is no more Brad Pitt in Angelina's life. I get no idea whose life he is in now. But yeah, if she's selling something, we're probably going to buy that too, just in the hopes that eventually Brad Pitt will come along with the deal, which is nuts. And if we think about it, we all know better than this. We know we are not going to be them no matter how much of their weird crap we buy. No matter how much of the potentially dangerous face cream they're trying to sell us. No matter how much of that we slather all over our face. We're not going to be them. It's not going to happen. So that was something that... that just sort of landed on me with a vengeance. Uh, and it's not through landing yet. Like I say, my drawers are still dumped out over the bed because I am still feeling that burning urge to rearrange my socks according to color. Uh, but to be fair, I already have them rearranged according to type of sock, just not color. So I got to work on that. And, of course, I do have a dress rack that I am pulling out so that I can start laying out a full week's worth of clothes in advance. Just, I'll lay it out there uh, because I only do this like the night before and clearly I'm not doing it right. You know, clearly uh, my desire to be the goddess of OCD is in jeopardy. I, I, I'm not going to make it. David Beckham is the goddess of OCD, and I, I'm i not even a sloppy second. So I got to work on this. Otherwise, I don't know what's going to happen otherwise. 
That's interesting. We should be asking ourselves that. What happens if I don't color code those socks? Now, in my case, it's going to bother me until I do it because I have seen a much better organization system than I have right now. But not everything in life is going to impact me like that. What's the worst thing that can happen to me if I don't have the same blazer Angelina Jolie has? Well, the easy answer to that is absolutely nothing, except I will have a higher bank balance at the end of the day. So I think we should look at that. Who is it that's having an impact on our lives? Are we getting too involved with them? It's a very one-sided relationship. Um, and I know that relationship from the other side because I have it with you. You see large pieces of my life and I get only the smallest snatches of yours. I get it from your comments. And a lot of you are really good about sharing. There are those of you who have shared the names of your pets and, and you'll come back week after week and tell me what your pets are doing. Um, we have this charming fellow up in Canada, up in the Northwest, you know, the cold part of Canada. And he's been doing things like home renovations. And he'll mention this in the comments. And I'm not going to mention any names. I don't have his permission. and I don't want to embarrass him. But every time I see his name in the comments, I just scurry right over. It's like, is the renovation still going? Now, he wasn't well last time I heard from him. Has he recovered? What's happening? And now it's getting to the time of year where I'm starting to wonder, you know, where is he going to spend the holidays? So from that side, I would say, don't be afraid to share in the comments because I personally look for it. But do keep in mind that it is of necessity a one-sided relationship. You are always going to know more about me than I am going to know about you. And even though I have warm, fuzzy feelings for all of you, can I honestly say you are my friends when I might not even know your first name? You know, that's when it gets tricky. And so, like I said, when I look at it from that point of view, it's easy to flip it. If I look at another YouTuber, it's very easy for me to say, this person is not my friend. If this person is selling me something, it's probably because it's for their financial benefit and not for mine, by the way. That's why this channel does not take sponsorships. We have never had a sponsor. And the only time we will get a sponsor on this channel is if somebody with decent products says to me, if you do a video commercial for us, we will give your viewers a decent discount. And by decent discount, I don't mean the lousy little 10 or 15% they're offering. No, 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 no. I'm not for sale that cheap and neither are you. But yeah, we don't do sponsorships here because I'm not out to sell you something that will benefit me. That I consider that an abuse of trust and I just won't go there. But you gotta remember that when you are dealing with people that you don't know, that should be your first question. What are they getting out of this? If I buy Angelina Jolie's jacket, what does she get out of it? And you're going to find that she definitely gets something. And then you have to ask yourself, would she be selling that jacket to me if she didn't get something out of the deal? And I think those questions will help us when we start differentiating between, you know, a legitimate influence, which is you see someone, you say, gee, she and I have the same coloring, she and I have the same body type, whatever. I wonder if that would look good on me. That's influence. Or buy this from this brand, buy this from that brand, take a look at my list in the video notes, links to everything I bought. That's sales. We need to be able to tease those apart. 
right, having said all of that, I have to let David Beckham off the hook. He is not intentionally selling me on mental illness. I'm very clear about that. He is just sort of tweaking my own little bit of OCD. By the way, my OCD bits are very, very small. But he is just tweaking that simply because of his own OCD bits. The man is not trying to make me crazy, even though maybe he's succeeding a little. But certainly, this is not someone who is attempting to ruin my life. And keep in mind, most of what I say about him is strictly tongue-in-cheek, and it's because he's a safe example to bring forward. Because like I say, who in the world thinks I'm going to become a soccer star? No one, right? So he makes for a good example. Okay, very quickly before I go, I did want to share this with you. This is one of my recent scarves and I got this thinking it would be a great queen scarf because you know hey it's just plaid but in fact this is a Diane von Furstenberg and notice that other than our little blue stripe where's my blue stripe okay there we go there's the blue stripe all right other than the little blue stripe. It's black and white and yellow. And we had talked about that, I think, last week or the week before last. Black and yellow was the hot color combination back in the, uh, in the 80s and 90s, I think. Huge. Uh, coincidentally, that was when Diane von Furstenberg was big, too. But I had grabbed this when I was in a... I need a queen scarf mood. And it turns out not a queen scarf. I still like it very much because the yellow is extremely bright. And I I think this is, it's a way for me to throw a huge punch of color into whatever I'm wearing without having to, you know, wear very colorful clothing. I can still wear, this is just white. So I can still wear white and meanwhile, I've got my color. So I thought I would share that with you because, yeah, I'm still buying scarves. I probably shouldn't, but I am. And uh, it's my therapy, I guess. All right. I, I, I should probably work on that, shouldn't I? Uh, one of many things I'm adding to the list. So we're going to take a look at a slideshow on the way out. I had expected Audie to be back by now, but he's not. I hope it's not because he's afraid to cross the property line with that caution tape on it. But as I showed you, I did tie it up out of his way. So hopefully he'll realize he can walk underneath it. All right, slideshow on the way out. In the meantime, we will see you again tomorrow. Have a terrific day.